TikTok's answer to Tiki Taka or the genuine heir to Sergio Busquets? Just how good is Martin Zubimendi? Fans are, are happy with what they're seeing from their team at the moment, <laughs> even though they're sixth in the league. They're flying. In terms of possession, for someone being spoken about as the heir to Busquets, Zubimendi's statistical numbers are underwhelming. He's barely hitting 50 passes on average a game, and the likes of Rodri are hitting close to 80 passes a game. And when you consider that Zubimendi's team, Real Sociedad, tend to dominate possession in most of the games they're in, that's a startlingly low number. Now, in the Champions League games, Zubimendi's pass volume has been greater than his league average, and in games against the likes of Real Madrid, he's managed to hit 60 passes per game. So there's a suggestion here that he raises his game against the better opponents. The eye test suggests that Zubimendi is particularly adept in the build-up phase, picking it up in the pivot role and providing an outlet for Sociedad to progress up the pitch when they're being pressed. He's courageous, press resistant, he's got a good grasp of when to use one-twos to get himself out of trouble, and he uses the sole of his foot especially really well. He uses it to receive it with that extra bit of class and buy himself some time, pausa, hence he stood out in the games where Sociedad have had a bigger opponent coming onto them, and then he has to find those little pockets and act as Real Sociedad's respite or connector. If there are flaws, well, he sometimes misplaces his passes into wide areas and sometimes these are really simple passes when trying to break out of his own third and he ends up overhitting them. And once his side is in the opponent's half, does he exert enough influence on the play? Personally, I don't think enough and thus it would be a massive step up for him to be tasked with being the register of an elite club. But I'd say in a deeper role such as deep line playmaker or holding midfielder, in terms of just pure possession ability, He's fairly solid, plays in the right way, but perhaps lacks that metronomic accuracy and pass participation of your Rodri Busquet type players at this moment in time. Nodded down and Morales in the area turns, stabs it goal. Defensively, Zubamendi is on the whole pretty solid. He's disciplined, positionally marks space well, with a great sense of when to attack for the ball and when to hold his position, an attribute you associate with the elite holding midfielders. In terms of 1v1 situations, generally handles them well with good standing tackles when he's up against someone athletically his equal or inferior. But when he's up against someone who's a bit silky, a bit pacey, unpredictable, he can be too easily beat in those 1v1 type of situations to be considered an impenetrable barrier for the back line. These issues tend to surface out wide and thus he isn't the type of CDM I'd overly trust to protect my fullback if he gallops forward and in a game where that fullback is up against an elite wing forward 1v1. Zubimendi doesn't give me that firefighter type of vibe that's going to pocket the best attackers in the world, but nine times out of ten, he will generally clean up defensively without a fuss. Now, despite these relative weaknesses in 1v1 situations, Zubimendi is particularly effective at following a man and putting pressure on his back in these central areas, looking to intercept high up the pitch. He makes several tackles in this central midfield region, and he's more than happy to go to ground. Rarely does he mistime those tackles and look rash, despite the aggressive nature of this approach. In terms of defensive stamina and positional intelligence, screens very well throughout the game, shifting from side to side well, and that allows him to almost act as a lighthouse, looking out for threats. Overall, solid defensive player, but in my opinion, lacks that physical presence and that complete error-free Teflon defensive game of maestros such as Carrick, Busquets, and I don't think he's likely at all to match the defensive midfield colossus status of the likes of a Rijkaard or a Desai. Both of them surpass him easily in terms of stature. First goal is crucial. Through ball here, it's a lovely one. Once again, some very poor stats here from Zubamendi, which do not seem to reflect the eye test. Admittedly, he doesn't really get heavily involved in the final third or even in the middle third. And due to the majority of his low pass volume being in his own half, there isn't much scope for him to show what he can do further afield. And yet from the eye test, we're seeing some gorgeous through balls, many with a weaker foot. So we can see that he's got a high football IQ. He's two-footed. He's got a high degree of passing technique, which demonstrates that he can execute some advanced level killer passes. The passing between the lines to progress the game is also very impressive. So overall, creative potential here, which could be unlocked under a coach who gives him more license to create. But then again, we saw a similar type of issue with someone like Alexis McAllister, who has vision, can pass between the lines, and does sometimes pull off gorgeous assists. 
but the volume of it is so pitiful that it's very hard for these players to suddenly change their spots and become genuine creative forces. Furthermore, as good as some of these passes are, the bread and butter for players like Prime Skulls, Xavi, Modric, is what we are witnessing truly of a world-class and generational standard for a regista? Overall, I think he's got potential to be more of a creator from these deeper areas, but I struggle to see him as an elite team's de facto playmaker-in-chief from that midfield region like your Joshua Kimmich's. I think he'll pull off the odd, breathtaking assist, but I don't think he'll be able to consistently week in, week out, pull that off. I think his focus, therefore, needs to be on generally hitting more progressive passes and improving those forward passing stats. Hey guys, wondering what software we use to produce the state-of-the-art telestration graphics software on this video? Download Play by Metrica Sports, the essential tool for every coach and analyst. Use the link in the description to access Metrica's website and then apply the code Pythagoras in Boots at the checkout for a 10% discount. Similar to Lissandro Martinez, Zubamendi gives off the impression that he's slight in height, but he makes up for that with fight. Now he's pretty tenacious in the air and he often wins headers from goal kicks. He's got a good leap, good sense of timing and rarely does he look flustered in the air. Now of course one has to slightly temper this with the fact that winning an aerial battle in midfield in a league like La Liga, which is you know renowned for its technical ability, the players are generally smaller in the midfield area. So is it a genuine litmus test for his prowess in the air? Maybe not. But in the Champions League, his aerial stats are at 70% success rate. So it seems like he is the real deal when it comes to aerial duels. In terms of technique, he keeps his eye on the ball really well. And I like how he just nudges his opponent just before the confrontation, tends to time it perfectly and do just enough to avoid giving away a foul. And that gives himself the opening to win the ball comfortably in the air. Bruno, I can only imagine it's a very special place to be right now, the Real Arena. In terms of dribbling, Zubamendi does not carry the ball often and once again the stats seem mediocre. But the eye test suggests a player who has quick changes of direction of either foot and possesses good balance. Now this is especially prevalent when he receives the ball deep and he's pressured in multiple directions, generally keeps his calm really well and wriggles his way out to find a pass. The issue Zubamendi has is that his footwork is ultimately rather basic compared to the very elite. There's no five-star skills like Busquets. He lacks the power of a Rodri who can glide and eat up yards in equal measure. When Zubamendi goes on that longer range burst, he finds it harder to protect the ball and maintain that burst, especially once he gets into a shoulder barge type situation. Hence, he's not someone you'd really want as your wide midfielder operating in the flank areas. Now, came away with the ball, then the challenge from Baranechea, Zubimendi turning away from danger, Baranechea... One, but people talk very highly of him, he's racing his hand there on the left-hand side. And getting... Statistically, long passing is not one of Zubimendi's strengths, and unfortunately, I'd say it's backed up by the eye test. Elite, deep-lying playmakers, you're expecting as a bare minimum 70% pass accuracy, and Zubimendi's is hovering closer to the 50% region. Now, one of the issues is that he's got this strange tendency to hoof the ball when it's in like a bouncing type situation, which completely runs contrary to his ability to bring composure in the deeper areas and help Sociedad to play out from the back. Even more weirdly, Zubamendi's lofted vertical passes in the final third are actually brilliant. He has a wonderful ability to split open defences with that type of pass, makes it look really easy, and yet at times he's struggling with a simple switch of play and not playing it into the stride of his teammate and making it rather awkward to receive. Overall, an area that I'd say definitely has some room to grow, but I find it very unlikely that somehow he becomes this Jabi Alonso type long passer in his prime. And once it cut back again, it is. He's going to drill it in and it's deflected in. By... Now, Zubamendi has already notched up four goals this season, but either this is a statistical anomaly or a sign that he's suddenly beginning to add more to his game. In truth, I'd say it's something in between. He's beginning to become more efficient inside the box and his sense of space and if the ball is there to be, you know, tapped in, I think that smell is getting better. But are we seeing long-range bangers and strong efforts from distance on a regular basis? Not really. He's got a good left foot in terms of hitting through balls, but when it comes to shooting, he genuinely looks like a weak foot and he leans back, skies a lot of these weak foot efforts. So overall, I'm not terribly convinced that Zubamendi is going to turn into this Gundogan type midfielder who does a bit of everything and can become a 10 goal a season midfielder on a regular basis. 
I don't think it's impossible for him to do it perhaps one season, but I'd be very surprised if he pulls that off on a regular basis as his strengths tend to lie in deeper areas. Tactically, Real Sociedad tend to set up in a 4-3-3 and Zubamendi plays central in the free in a kind of flattish free which allows Zubamendi at times to venture forward, but generally you'd say he's the team's de facto holding midfielder, deep line playmaker hybrid. In possession, they dominate most games and adopt a 2-5-3 structure with the midfield and the fullbacks all within the same region of the pitch, with the two advanced midfielders at times moving forward to make it a front five and Zubamendi staying in front of the centre-backs to form that triangle with them as well as the eights ahead of him. Thus, he's a key component of Sociedad's spine. In terms of transfers, he's been heavily linked to Arsenal. Now, based on the profile we've built on him, he can't really fill that LCM position that Xhaka featured in. He'd have to go where Rice is and Rice would have to go possibly into that LCM position himself or Zinchenko. I think it's a similar dilemma to what we discussed in the Onana video. Pros are that he can enhance Arsenal's build-up play but negatives are that it doesn't really resolve the game controlling creation issue that they've got from that left midfield side. It just makes Arsenal more dominant in that build-up play, more dominant in possession which seems more of a sideways step rather than addressing the actual steps forward that need to be taken by Arsenal. Barcelona have flirted with him for some time and there's no doubt that they're crying out for a natural six to replace the plodding Romeo and add some sizzle to their build-up play. Whilst I do think he would improve them instantly and be a better fit than Romeo, I do think that they'll be slightly underwhelmed if they're expecting him to be the genuine heir to Busquets. I don't think he's in the same league as Busquets or even a Pep Guardiola. I think, is he really going to stiffen up that spine to a world-class standard? I think Busquets was able to provide that side with steel as well as Silk. Another team I think he's suited to is Liverpool. I think he'd be an upgrade to McAllister at pivot and an upgrade to Endo in possession. But would he be that physical powerhouse that Fabinho was? Again, I doubt it. So they may still want to hold out on that ideal type of player to feature there rather than get a marginal upgrade on what they already have. Bayern Munich have also been linked up with him. And is he the right partner for Kimmich? Well, he would take the burden of the build-up play off Kimmich, that is for sure, and they'd produce some pretty sexy possession football. But again, I see that pair being quite lightweight as a pairing. There's a big physical presence missing. He's no Javi Martinez. If Bayern went with a back three, then you can kind of get away with both of them as a double pivot in, say, like a 3-4-1-2. But otherwise, in a 4-2-3-1, you're going to face similar issues to what Chelsea have currently with Caicedo and Enzo. In conclusion, Zubamendi is a single pivot in a generation where there's very few natural pivot players, thus it makes him a rarity in the modern game. Hence, he's been labelled that heir to Busquets, but in truth, I do not see him being in the same league as the Spaniard, who for me was one of the greatest holding, deep-lying playmaker hybrids of all time. I think Zubamendi's bottom level is quite high because he's got good intelligence, heads the ball well, and there's very few gaping holes in his game. I had to be quite picky with the weaknesses as overall he's quite a solid player. The issue is that when you start comparing him to the elite, he's got very few true strengths statistically outside of the fact that he's one of those few midfielders that thrives in deeper lying pivot play. Thus the team he goes to, the coach he plays under will have a big say as to the level he's going to reach. I think a world class level is not beyond him but generational for me seems out of reach. I think for £50 million based on the current market, it's not that huge of a financial hit if he ends up being a bust. He's got a decent bottom level. So at worst, I'd argue you're getting at least a Champions League group stage level player for at least five years in a position where there's very few players who can play that role. What would be needed for him to do well? Well, emphasis on his pivot play. Have dominant physical midfielders who can run and create for him. He can't really be relied upon as the main man of the midfield, in my opinion for an elite, elite side looking to build a dynasty, but he needs to be an underrated but vital cog. What's the worst that could happen to him? Well, if he's made to be more of a Regista or Metzala type figure where he's having to do a lot of creating, a lot of dominating the final third or the middle third, I think that would be a mistake in the long term. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Please like, share and subscribe and see you guys again next time. Bye.